If you've ever tried sending Ethereum or using a DeFi app, you've probably noticed something frustrating, gas fees. Sometimes they're a few cents, sometimes they're a few dollars, and sometimes they're ridiculously high. But what exactly are gas fees? Why do they exist? And why are Ethereum transactions sometimes so expensive? In this video, I'll break it down simply so you'll finally understand. Let's start with the basics. On Ethereum, every transaction requires computational power. Whether you're sending ETH, swapping tokens on Uniswap, or minting an NFT, the network's computers called nodes have to process and confirm what you're doing. Gas is the fee you pay to compensate those computers for the work. Think of it as the fuel that powers the Ethereum network. Without gas, nothing would move. Now, gas isn't paid in dollars or cents. It's paid in a unit called GUE, which is a tiny fraction of ETH. The more complex your transaction is, the more gas it requires. For example, a simple transfer of ETH might use little gas, but interacting with a smart contract, like minting an NFT or borrowing from a DeFi protocol, uses much more. So why are gas fees sometimes so expensive? It all comes down to supply and demand. The Ethereum network has a limited capacity, it can only handle a certain number of transactions per second. When lots of people are trying to use the network at the same time, like during a popular NFT launch or when prices are moving fast, the demand for block space goes up. Miners or validators will always prioritize transactions that pay the highest fees. So if you want your transaction processed quickly, you need to pay more gas. This creates a bidding system. Imagine a highway with limited lanes. If traffic is light, you can drive freely. If traffic is heavy, you either wait in line or pay extra for the fast lane. Ethereum works the same way. During busy times, gas prices spike because everyone is trying to get through at once. Ethereum developers know this is a problem and that's why upgrades have been introduced. One big change was EIP-1559, which made gas fees more predictable by introducing a base fee that gets burned and an optional tip for faster confirmation. This helped with transparency, but it didn't solve the core issue of congestion. That's where scaling solutions come in. Layer 2 technologies like Optimism, Arbitrum and ZK Sync process transactions of the main Ethereum chain and then settle them later. This reduces congestion and lowers costs. Many users are already moving to layer 2 networks for cheaper gas fees while still benefiting from Ethereum's security. Ethereum itself is also evolving. The move to proof of stake and future upgrades like sharding are designed to increase the network's capacity. The goal is to make transactions faster and cheaper while still keeping the system decentralized and secure. But until scaling is fully implemented, gas fees will continue to rise and fall depending on network demand. That's why sometimes you see crazy fees during busy times and other times, especially late at night or on weekends, fees are much lower. So, to sum it up, gas fees are the cost of using Ethereum. They exist to pay validators for processing transactions. They are high when demand is high because there is limited space per block. Upgrades and scaling solutions are working to fix this, but for now fees are just part of the reality of using Ethereum. And that's gas fees explained in simple terms. Next time you see a crazy fee, you'll know exactly why it happens. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more easy crypto guides. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.